What is up YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. This video is going to be all about the Marvel Netflix panel that happened last night at San Diego Comic-Con. A bunch of cool stuff was announced, including Iron Fist, including Power Man or Luke Cage, and, and including the Defenders. So let's get right into it. So they started off the panel by bringing out some John Bernthal. He came out, talked a little bit about Punisher. They did announce and confirm what we already knew that the Punisher season one is being worked on. John said a couple cool things about how he thought Frank was in his bones now. I thought that was pretty sweet. He's really into the character. And if you follow John Bernthal on social media, you'll know that he takes it very seriously, did the research, read the right comics. He's the man. He's a, he's a he's the man of the people. Um, but then the big the big drop that happened next was Luke Cage. They dropped a Luke Cage footage, a trailer, um, basically dropped a bunch of different information about this. And the Luke Cage series looks awesome for so many different reasons. Um, I personally really, really like the character when he was a part of the Jessica Jones series. I thought he was awesome. It was really interesting how they brought in his wife and that whole twist with Jessica, which I won't spoil in case you haven't seen it. We should definitely check out Jessica Jones. And basically the thing that really jumped out at me was the music right away. So it starts playing Wu-Tang Clan right away. The, it's just this awesome vibe, vibrant colors. The music fit everything really, really well. And I did a little bit more research into this. And it turns out that the executive producer of the show is a man named Chio Hudaro Cocker. And this guy actually worked for Vibe for a long time. He was one of the last people to ever interview Biggie Smalls when he was still alive. He wrote a book about Biggie Smalls called The Life, Death, and Afterlife of Notorious B.I.G. And he was also a writer on Notorious, the big film, the biopic about Biggie Smalls. And he talked about how influential not only hip-hop music, but African-American culture and all of these things are really, really obviously important to Luke Cage as a character and as a show. They said that every single episode was going to be named after a gang star song, which was a hip hop duo that came um, from actually started in Boston, but became known as a New York hip hop band. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Chio said that the the uh, show itself was going to be like the wu tangification of the Marvel Universe, which is just like one of the most awesome things I have ever heard. So it'll be really awesome to check that out, to get that hip hop vibe, to get that African American vibe. Because the thing is, so we have Black Panther out there, right? Who was the first black superhero. And I love T'Challa and I think he's awesome, but he's not African American, he's African. And he's actually kind of elitist too. I mean, he's super wealthy, he's uh, in this very uh, xenophobic society. They don't like being outside of their little thing and they're, um, it's just very different than African-American culture. So if you know anything about Luke Cage, it'll be really, really cool to see how they play this out over 13 episodes and bring in all of these pieces of that culture to really sweeten the deal. I caught a little glimpse of Misty Knight, which is pretty awesome. It means we're gonna be getting some Heroes for Hire stuff maybe trickled on in there, which could be really, really Cool. So the Luke Cage stuff was awesome. Uh, check, you can find the footage online um, of the trailer and of some of the other things. It looks like they're going to follow the pattern they've established by having amazing villains as a part of the Marvel Netflix series. This is one thing they have that's really much better in the TV shows than in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that would be the villains. Of course, barring Loki from the, the equation, there's really no great villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But Kilgrave, amazing villain. The Kingpin, amazing villain. So, the guy who plays Remy on uh, House of Cards, he's going to be playing one of the main villains in the Luke Cage series. And this dude's an incredible actor. If you see the scenes that he's in, he really elevates it. And I think just like those other two shows I mentioned, he's going to really make the show great because of great villainy. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm really hoping that we get maybe some Iron Fist introduction in the show because as many of you know there was a great series that really propelled the Luke Cage character to popularity and that is when they did the whole Ebony and Ivory thing and they had um, Danny Rand and Luke Cage be partners 
and you had the Iron Fist and Power Man, or Power Man and Iron Fist series, which was awesome. People love that. So hopefully we're going to be getting some of that. And speaking of Danny Rand, they drop a little teaser for the Iron Fist show, which will be coming out next year. Um, of course, Luke Cage is dropping September 30th, which is relatively soon. The plan is to then drop uh, Iron Fist early next year, around the time that we got Daredevil Season 1. And then later in the year, they're going to drop Defenders, which I'll get to in a second. But the Iron Fist was definitely the thing that got me the most hype. There was so much secrecy around this project. For a while, people didn't know if they were actually going to follow through and make the Iron Fist series. Finn Jones, who plays Loras on Game of Thrones, not anymore because he in the last episode, but Finn Jones was cast. We found that out earlier in the year. I think he's perfect casting. He's going to be really dope. And the footage they showed was amazing. It shows the really, really dark origin for Iron Fist. And if you didn't know, Iron Fist has one of the darkest origins in all of comic books. I would venture to say it's just as dark, if not darker than Bruce Wayne's origin. And if you want to check that out, a really great comic book that came out, it started in uh, 2014 and went all the way into 2015, was the Iron Fist Living Weapon series, which was actually written, drawn, and lettered by Carrie Andrews, who is just an incredible talent. The book took kind of a long delay because he was doing everything on it, but it just totally nails it. It hits the tone. It tells you the origin of Danny, which is incredibly dark, and they give you a little taste of that in the teaser. They also show New York. I think I saw maybe Rand Tower there. I don't know if that maybe that will be Rand Tower. They also show some of his power as he punches through a wall. So really, really cool stuff. I'm super jacked up about that. I think it's going to be awesome. I mean, this is like two of my most favorite things. It's magic and kung fu combined into one character which will be incredibly dope and Danny is one of these members from the Defenders that is on his magic is is in some ways on par with Doctor Strange I mean Doctor Strange knows what the Iron Fist is he's well aware of the place where the monks are from which is actually going to be our nerd card question so I'm not going to give it away right now but I thought that trailer was awesome um, and then it leads in the panel leads to a teaser for the defenders now this trailer was okay I mean the Nirvana song was awesome I thought it was cut together really nicely but it's mostly footage from shows we've already seen except for some parts of Luke Cage now the Luke Cage scenes were sweet some of those we've even already seen but overall there was a lot to love in this trailer it's a real thing that's happening the logo itself which is like this hand juxtaposed against the city skyline of New York. It kind of maybe hints at what the big bad is going to be for Defenders. This war that Stick has been talking about since Daredevil Season 1 might actually come to fruition. We might see that actually take place. Maybe the resurrected... Um, Electra, who might be possessed by a demon. Uh, this might be the big bad, you know, which will bring Matt at odds with his own conscious. And just overall, Netflix and Marvel in general has done a really great job of establishing these characters that we're going to fall in love with. And then when they have character moments in the Defenders, it's going to be all the sweeter because we've grown attached to these characters and we've gone with them on these personal journeys. This is something that DC did not do with their cinematic universe, which is part of the problem with Batman v Superman, but Marvel seems to nail this. They seem to really know what they're doing, and I cannot wait for Luke Cage on September 30th. I cannot wait for Iron Fist. Hopefully we get those two to hang out. They should be buddies in the Defenders. Like Those two need to be buddies in the Defenders. Jessica Jones will be kind of hilarious, maybe the most powerful person in the group kind of it'll be kind of in my opinion between Danny and her as far as who's the most powerful and it's probably her I mean depending on how they scale her down or you know they scale him up or whatever but I'm pretty sure she's gonna be their uh, their big gun uh, their Thor if you will um, and I just I personally can't wait like Defenders are gonna be awesome the Netflix series you might have heard me talk about this in other videos 
but the Marvel Netflix series are the best adaptations of comic books in general. I think the CW universe is right behind them. And there's something to be said for the serialized weekly water cooler talk that you can have with the CW universe. But the Marvel Netflix shows are like getting a trade paperback and tearing through it. So they just, they have their own kind of flavor and they're amazing. They're a number one best adaptations of comic books out there in my opinion and I'm super jacked as far as the future of what this kind of world that they created is uh, is going to become. Uh, let me know in the comment section guys like what were you most jacked up about? I mean what do you think about this hip hop African American culture show that we're going to be getting with Luke Cage? I mean are you super jacked up for that? What do you think about the magic and kung fu that we're going to get in Iron Fist? And let me know what you think about Defenders. I mean, they didn't really tell us too much. They showed a little bit more. I mean, do you think it's going to be the hand? Do you think it's the war that uh, Stick has been talking about? Uh, let me know what you think about that series as well. So let's check that nerd card. Today's question is going to be about the mystical city that Iron Fist gets trained in. It is the city they find when they're out there in the middle of the snow in the mountains. It's where those monks bring him it is supposedly a city that no one can find unless you know like magical ways of getting there I think the Doctor Strange could get there and any of the monks could get there and of course Danny could get there and there was this crazy moment in Avengers vs X-Men when the uh, base Cyclops with the Phoenix Force power breaks into this place and finds all the Avengers that were hiding out and they're hiding hope there because the whole thing was he's trying to find hope and uh, and all that. So what is the name of that mystical city? Answer the question in the comments section below. Like the video if you thought it was awesome. Subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos like this. Monday is going to be a big day for me. I'm going to recap everything that goes down at San Diego Comic Con over the weekend. So come back on Monday. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. And as always, I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!